can look at it this way. Somebody got bipolars. I don't know who. But they are the most ridiculous thing I've ever I know <laughs> what to go So I don't know whether to go like this or like this. I know. <laughs> so if I see me like, <laughs> my neck is going to be so sore and high. I know. It's going up stairs. Well, someone said that, yeah, what, the, what, the, what do they call it? The, the, the um, stick in my nose and everything? Yeah. <laughs> how good my posture was Remember until I have to look down to see. <laughs> I'm like, wow, I must be tall. I have to look down and see <laughs> chin on my chest all day. So, <coughs> okay. In a sweet by and by. Something to fall off the sidewalk. Ah. I sit in a sweet by I haven't tried stairs yet, so if you hear me fall, <laughs> you'll know. If you hear me fall, you'll know. Fall, you'll know. Said, Unless you hear a really loud scream, I'll be fine. <laughs> I, I sit in a sweet by and by. We no. both have by all right, well, um, what I was thinking I couldn't find, so I'll just, um, I'm going to read Isaiah 54. Um, I think we just keep coming back around to it, and so I'm going to read it out of the message translation, which I don't think I've actually read out of the message, so here we go. We'll hear it for the first time together. Sing, barren woman who has never had a baby. Fill the air with song, you who've never experienced childbirth. You're ending up with far more children than all those childbearing women. God says so. Clear lots of ground for your tents. Make your tents large. Spread out. Think big. Use plenty of rope. Drive the tent pegs deep. You're going to need lots of elbow room for your growing family. You're going to take over whole nations. You're going to resettle abandoned cities. Don't be afraid. You're not going to be embarrassed. Don't hold back. You're not going to come up short. You forget about all the humi humiliations of your youth and the indig indignities of being a widow will fade from your memory. For your maker is your bridegroom, his name, God of the angel armies. Your redeemer is the holy of Israel, known as God of the whole earth. You were like an abandoned wife, devastated with grief, and God welcomed you back. Like a woman married young and then left, says your God. Your Redeemer God says, I left you, but only for a moment. Now with enormous compassion, I'm bringing you back. In an outburst of anger, I turned my back on you, but only for a moment. It's with lasting love that I'm tenderly caring for you. This exile is just like the days of Noah for me. I promised then that the waters of Noah would never again flood the earth. I'm promising now no more anger, no more dressing you down. For even if the mountains walk away and the hill, hills fall to pieces, my love won't walk away from you. My covenant commitment of peace won't fall apart. The God who has compassion on you says so. Afflicted city, storm battered, unpitied. I'm about to rebuild you with stones of turquoise. Lay your foundations with sapphires. Construct your towers with ruby, your gates with jewels, and all your walls with precious stones. All your children will have God for their teacher. That a men what a mentor for your children. You'll be built solid, grounded in righteousness, far from any trouble, nothing to fear, far from terror. It won't even come close. If anyone attacks you, don't for a moment suppose that I sent them. And if any should attack, 
nothing will come of it. I create the blacksmith who fires up his forge and makes a weapon designed to kill. I also created the destroyer, but no weapon that, no weapon that can hurt you has ever been forged. Wow, I like that. No weapon that can hurt you has ever been forged. Any accuser who takes you to court will be disarmed as dismissed as a liar. That is what God's servants can expect. I'll see to it that everything works out for your best. This is God's decree. There has never been a weapon formed. There's never a, been a weapon created that can harm you. That is amazing. Because the enemy wants to get us all riled up, get us worried, get us doubting God. Did God really say that? Did God really promise me that? Wants to embarrass us with our boldness, you know, telling people, sharing God's truth. And then when it doesn't happen, the minute we want it to happen, do not get discouraged. He is faithful, and that is his promise. God cannot lie. He cannot. It is not in him. All of his promises are yea and amen for those who will believe. Believe in the substance. I love that faith is a substance. It's a tangible thing that we can hold on to. The faith of Jesus Christ is something that we can hold on to. It's not our faith. It's not it's not how much we even believe sometimes. It's just will we just stand and not let go? Will we, will we, we hold on to our hope? Sometimes I feel like we lose track of our hope. You know, the hope is that, that, I don't know, I guess as I've gotten older, I feel like I used to be so naive when I was young. Well, I liked being naive. <laughs> I had nothing to worry about. Everybody liked me. I didn't care. I was oblivious to all of the negativity, to all the stuff. I just, I was oblivious to it. And the older I get, the more worn down I get, the less naive I get, and more aware of the junk I get, the more I think, you know what, I'm just gonna act like I don't know that exists. Because it really doesn't do anything but bring me down. It doesn't do anything but discourage me. <clears throat> so I'm gonna choose to be blissfully naive and just trust. I, I guess that, I just, I don't know, I feel so fortunate. I've just always believed God. It never, it just never occurred to me that he wouldn't do it. Like, it never occurred to me, maybe not right now, maybe not when I want it, but I have no doubt in my mind that he will do what he said he will do. There is no doubt in my mind that those things will happen when I don't know. And it really honestly don't care. I just know they will happen. And I will just keep believing and will keep forcing my mouth to say the words that I believe, you know. So I encourage you guys, no matter what, I always, I, it's my favorite thing to say, things are not as they appear. I believe that with all my heart. Things are not as they appear. We get so hung up on what we can see around us. And, you know, we count the number of people here. But there is a weight of glory, right? There is, a, I don't know, the, just a manifest presence. Literally, when two or more of us are together, when two of us talk, mm -hmm. his presence is so powerful. And if we could just see the ministering spirits, I, I always think of Elijah on that hill. He has no doubt that the battle is won, and his armor bearer is like, oh my gosh, they are coming. They're all around us. He's freaking out. And he's like, open your eyes. Mm -hmm. yep. So I tell you this night, just open your eyes Amen. and see that God mm -hmm. is for you. Yes. He commands hosts of angels, mm -hmm. hosts of ministering spirits and messengers, and he will accomplish what his word has been sent to do. In Jesus' name. Amen. No, sorry. <laughs> Keep going. Um, anybody have any prayer requests tonight or any testimonies, reactions? I think a friend uh, said, uh, you might have heard of Murray McDonald. And he played the Hoover and Shelly Dickman song. I wouldn't let them believe you guys, but uh, he, his wife now,
did was it never anything from Mental Block from that slam that was that, you know, a full throat left to his dad who was whom he just slammed into. I'm trying to think of like how Marty was just faithful to it and how you know, that you guys said, Well, you gotta let these people up and play and I said, I will. And I know those guys were in the professionals who brought me to play with the Colts and such an inspirational guy. But to have something like that happen with your wife. I just hope everybody lifts her up, you know, and that that whole family would just just believe in God. I know they do. I know it's hard, but it's a slow process. And then there's Rusty at work. There was an older guy that called me about 50, 57. He's really going to the Lord. He just died out.
I, I, I pray for Nathan all the time, and I, I can't help but think that it has to get frustrating, <laughs> you know. The number of bodies in this church is not a reflection of the word that we're receiving. And I think, in my mind, I know this probably doesn't make any sense logically, but it's proof that the word that we are receiving is true because the enemy would not fight so hard to keep people out of his place if the word was not pure and if it was not Jesus himself who comes here. The world hates Jesus Christ. And he is so present in this place to me that that is like almost more proof that what is going on here is, I don't care if there's ever bodies in this church, it has an impact on this city. The Eastern Gate House of Prayer, the fewer people come, the more, the more powerful it is. And I know that sounds ridiculous because it's just for him. Yeah. It's just for him. And it's our heart for him. And it's our heart for this region. <clears throat> and we don't do it to please people. We don't do it to, I mean, I, I, I get pleasure out of it by, by, by doing it, by pouring out the worship, by pouring out the, the prayer and, and that. But I do it for him and I do it because I love Jesus. We all do it because we love the Lord, we love each other, and we love this city. We love this nation. We love the people that God has created, our brothers and sisters who just don't know him. And it is only a matter of time. And, you know, I, I can't wait. I just, like, I just can't wait because it just, it's so like God to say, I'm going to bring revival to a place where there's, how many of us, 10 of us maybe on a good night on a Wednesday? That's where I'm going to come and show myself mighty. Ridiculous. When there's mega churches all around us who don't have an ounce of the presence of God that we have. I've been in so many big places where the revivals, you know, you go and you know God was there. It's that, exactly. I wa- Down in Brownsville, I went and I knew God had been there. I could feel the remains of God's presence, but it wasn't anything like some of the services we've had here where God is present. It's so different. And what God's wanting to do, not not for us to build a school of revival, not for us to build a school of the supernatural, but to just be and teach people how to be and live and walk in the fullness of what he has for us. How powerful. Jesus changed the entire world, the entire human race, with 12 men. 12 men. And his feet. He didn't have a car. He didn't have a plane. He didn't have a train. He had two feet. And sometimes a boat. And probably a camel and a mule once in a while. Seriously, we have the internet. We have social media. And we have the word of God being preached and revealed here in such a powerful way that those seeds have to bear fruit. And whether we see it or not, I think it's kind of irrelevant. Mm -hmm. They are bearing fruit Mm -hmm. in the lives of others in Jesus' name. Nobody was killed. You know, that's right down the street in Pleasant Hill. Yeah. With a man just started shooting. He got kicked out of his dad's house and just started <coughs> shooting people. Anybody he saw he was trying to shoot didn't kill anybody and shot the side of a house. Nobody, I mean, there were people, I think, injured, but nobody was killed and no life was taken. So, amen. remember Laura and Mark too. Let's just remember them and Zach. Yeah. Mark's traveling for his work now and Laura's in the hospital and really busy here. So let's just remember them. remember Jamie and Peter too. Yeah. There's um, some healing, I think, some past wounds that need to be healed. Yeah. Um, and uh, protection and direction for the future for 
you have provided for every need, Lord, in your finished work, Lord, that it is finished, that we just believe your word, Lord, as true, as complete, Lord, that by faith, Lord, we speak and we believe what we do not see with our eyes, Lord, but we know it will come to pass and it must come to pass. Jesus, Lord, for healing, Lord, for the members of this body, Lord, with a spirit of Lord, to be cast out. The spirit of health, Lord, the spirit of strength, Lord, be renewed, Lord. Jesus, that by your blood, Lord, we claim these precious promises, Lord. That you encourage those who are discouraged, Lord, who are worn down, Lord, whose hope has run dry, Lord. Jesus, that you would anoint them with the oil of gladness, Lord. The balm of Gilead, Lord, the healing that needs to take place in the hearts of your people, Lord. Lord, that your grace is sufficient, Lord, for every situation, Lord. Where sin, Lord, where sickness abounds, Lord, grace does much more abound. Jesus, that you know the need, the root of every situation, Lord. Lord, that there is nothing that you have not already done for us, Lord. Let healing flow to the physical bodies, Lord, to the minds and the hearts of your people, Lord. Healing flow, Lord, for Laura, where she sits right now in that hospital room. That your presence fills that room, Lord. That you fill her heart and her mind with your word, Lord, with your presence, Lord. That you calm the fear that speak the whispers in her ear, Lord, that try to distract her, Lord. Jesus. Lord. Lord. You know the root of every situation, Lord, that you give wisdom to those that provide care. That you give supernatural wisdom and revelation to those who bring care to those in need, Lord. Whether healing comes through a doctor's hand, whether healing comes through medication, Lord, whether healing comes supernaturally by your spirit, Lord, let your healing come however it comes. We will not limit you, Lord. Just let your healing flow. Let your healing flow, Lord, that you pay too high a price for your people to walk in sickness and disease, to deal with these lies these lies from the enemy, that they are less than what you have called us to be. Lord, that we, your chosen ones, are a new creation. Sickness, disease has no power over your new creation. The eternal life that dwells in the heart of your people, Lord, would rise up. Let that eternal life, the Spirit of God within every one of us, rise up and do battle for us, Lord. Lord, those principalities and powers, Lord, they come. They come and they spread their lies, Lord, but we will not be down. We will not be silent, Lord. We will speak your word in faith, Lord, believing that you have already made the way. You have already given us the victory, Lord. You have taken the keys, Lord, to death, to hell and the grave. We have nothing to fear. There has never been a weapon formed that can harm us. There's never been a weapon formed that can harm us. No sickness, no disease can harm us. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the 
truth, for the revelation of the truth of your grace, for the revelation of your finished work, the revelation of who we are as new creation, Lord, new creatures in you, Lord, one with you. There is no end to us, no beginning, Lord, that we are one with you from the foundations of the earth before you formed the heavens and the earth, Lord, we were in you as we shall be forevermore. Jesus. Jesus. These principalities and powers try to disconnect us from our earthly, our earthly place in this world, Lord. Try to break the connection to our heavenly home. But we will not, we will not stop, Lord. We will not be silent. Jesus, as you describe Jacob's ladder, Lord, there is a way where heaven comes to earth. Where we rise up to heaven, where there is no end and no beginning, Lord. Lord, our minds are so consumed and stuck in time and place. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear the truth, the reality of eternity that is already with us and in us. Jesus. Then we will truly be bold. Then we will truly know all that you have done and provided for us. Jesus. We praise you tonight, Lord, that you are worthy that the world would know that the world would know you Jesus and your great love and your great love Lord we thank you and we praise you in Jesus name I bet it says Sunday school sign up is in the back. <laughs> and then have we picked a date for our holiday potluck, our Christmas? The 14th, okay. Sunday the 14th. So be thinking about um, soup. Yay, it's my favorite. I love the soup and, soup and salad, soup and sandwich, soup and something. Okay. Bread rolls. Soup and sides. There you go. Soup and sides. Yes, super size, <laughs> super soups. The 14th in Jesus' name. All right. Let's speak the word. Let's just go right to the word. Drive us again that your people may rejoice in you. Yes, Lord. I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus. I cast out demons, I speak in new tongues, I lay hands on the sick and they do recover. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law, therefore I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created it to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of my understanding being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. Yes, Lord. The Lord rebukes the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Roberto, do you want to come take the offering tonight for us, please? Please and thank you.
he did it because that's the one I could lay out the slides. So. <laughs>
Praise to the King. Praise to the King. Praise to the King. King of the Lord. Praise to the King. Praise to the Lord. You're worthy, 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 Lord.
Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for your presence tonight, Lord. We know that you never leave us or forsake us, but we appreciate, Lord, the, the awareness of your presence. And we bless you tonight, Lord. I ask you to bless the rest of this service and everyone that's here tonight, Lord, with your continued presence and revelation. In Jesus' name, and everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless all of you. Thank you, worship team. Praise God. As always, uh, you confirm what the Lord has been dealing with me about and everything that was testified to in this song, Show Me Your Glory. And uh, I'm going to be brief tonight, and I really mean that. Whether it manifests or not may be another thing. I mean it anyway. Praise the Lord. And uh, give everybody a chance to get home at a reasonable time. On Wednesday night, praise the Lord. But I've got quite a few scriptures uh, to kind of set this up a little bit. And I, and I am going to be brief. I just want to, I want to put some things out here for your consideration, amen, for the Holy Spirit to uh, reveal to you. So uh, I'm not going to try to uh, perfectly join this all together. I'm going to leave that to the Holy Spirit and you. I'll, I'll try to connect some things here, but I want you to, to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you about this as well. Because it came to me in a rather, in a kind of an odd way. And, Generally, something will trigger uh, what the Lord gives me to, to teach or to preach. Uh, you know, an encounter with somebody, uh, you know, something somebody has said to me, or just maybe just reading the scripture. Uh, but this just came out of the clear blue uh, in terms of manifestation uh, and what that really means. And so uh, I, I'm going to. Let's just begin with Philippians chapter 2. I won't try to confuse you with what has already confused me. Philippians chapter 2, and I want to read verses 5 through 15, Roberto. We've got a couple of scriptures here to begin with, and then I have quite a few scriptures that I want to use just to kind of put this into your head, amen, um, about what I think sometimes we miss. We, we see... Uh, maybe the theology without seeing the revelation, if you understand what I'm saying, praise the Lord. But uh, So beginning at Philippians uh, 2, verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, I want you to think about these scriptures as we read them and think of them literally, not religiously or, you know, positionally, but literally, amen? So let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, so we want to, here, here's what he's saying. I want you to think like Jesus thought. And the way Jesus thought was, being in the form of God, he didn't consider that it was robbery to be equal with God. Now, I know that sounds almost blasphemous from where most of us came from, but that is what the scripture is saying. And unless we really get understanding of this, it's going to be hard for us to move into everything that God wants for us and has promised us. Uh, the scripture says it's by these promises that we become partakers of the divine nature. That's what he's saying, right? So let's move on, praise the Lord. But made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, coming in the likeness of men. So here we are, people with all kinds of problems and failures and weaknesses and just human, you know. But there's no reputation, there's no necessarily respect from others, even our own, you know, sometimes lack of self-respect has nothing to do with the way we're supposed to be thinking and operating. Being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has 
highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, which is exactly what God has done for us. We were crucified with Christ. We were buried with him. We've been raised together to sit in heavenly places. Amen. So this is, it's talking, not just talking about Jesus, it's talking about us. We are the body of Christ. We are one with Christ. So he has given us that name, right? That's the name that we use. The, the authority that we have is in that name. Above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing. All right? Now, let's look at Acts chapter 22, verses 6 through 11. Acts 22, uh, 6 through 11. Now it happened as I journeyed and came near Damascus about noon, suddenly a great light from heaven shone around me. And I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So I answered, Who are you, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. And those who were with me indeed saw the light and were afraid, but they did not hear the voice of him who spoke to me. So I said, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, arise and go into Damascus, and there you will be told all things which are appointed for you to do. And since I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of those who were with me, I came into Damascus. Now, it may not sound like those things go together at all, but uh, I want to show you how they do. Amen? At least in what I feel like the Lord's showing me. Praise the Lord. So I've got a bunch of scriptures here that we're going to look at, just brief scriptures, but just to pound this into you, so to speak. <laughs> Amen. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 18. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Is that Matthew 4, 18? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Matthew 5, 14 through 16. If you are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Right? You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. All right? Luke 179. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Praise the Lord. I'm not sure that this is right here, but Luke, try Luke 1. Is there a 79 or Luke 1? Okay, Luke, Luke 1, 79. To give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. John 1, 4 through 9. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. Amen. John 3, verse 19. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. John 8, 12. And this is just a small portion, if you want to go back to your concordance and look up an exhaustive list of these, it goes on forever. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. John 12, 36.
while you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. Acts chapter 9 and verse 3. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. This is what we read earlier. Chapter 12, Acts 12, verse 7. And now, behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Amen. Romans chapter 13, verse 12. The night is far spent, the day is at hand, therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are the light in the world, or light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 4. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. 1 Timothy 6, 16. Who alone has immortality, dwelling in the unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. 1 Peter 2 and 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a connection between God and light. God is light. Jesus is the light of the world. We become that light. Mm -hmm. And that light, in that light, is power. In that light is presence. In that light is manifestation. Now, as I said, that's just a small portion of scriptures that refer to the light and how that interrelates between us and God and then us and the world, Amen. just as it did with Jesus. Uh, the scripture talks about him being a consuming fire. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of light, yeah. praise the Lord. And uh, so let me, I don't I want to get too far ahead of myself, but just let me just talk to you a moment about vision, about sight. It's interesting, Suzanne's talking about bifocals. I got bifocals, praise the Lord. And uh, when you get those, uh, I started out years ago with the line type, uh, and then I got the progressive ones, and that, that'll really f freak you out. Is that what you have? Because you never, are, you know, it takes a while to figure out exactly where that thing is. And you can be like this for quite a while. You look like a bobblehead trying to exactly. read stuff, you know. <laughs> praise the Lord. But vision is a... The, the older you get, the more you realize how valuable it is, praise the Lord. But natural vision begins with light rays that are bouncing off the surface of objects that are around us. And those reflected rays travel through, an at through the atmosphere and they enter the eyeball where they are assimilated and focused. And I'm not going to break down the whole, you know, the iris, the retina, the cornea and all that stuff, but we understand. It goes through the eyeball and it's assimilated there and then it, fo it focuses. It becomes focused. And then the final destination for those light rays that are being assimilated here in the eyeball is the uh, layer of nerve tissue at the back of the eye where the light is transformed into electrical signals that travel through the optic nerve to the visual area of your brain. Now, all this happens in split seconds, obviously, but it, it's still, it's, that's the way it works, amen? And the brain cells then decode the signals into images, right? Providing us with sight. Praise the Lord. So then, as natural vision is the result of reflected light from physical objects, spiritual vision comes from the reflected light of God in the spirit realm. And that's what all of this is really talking about. There we go. So we are that light. Mm 
in the world. We are the reflected light or the image of or the manifestation of God in this world. So it, it, you know, we think of it in spiritual terms, but the fact is there's something very logical and lawful and scientific about this reality. Now, if we are that reflection, we, we are that light, then in us is that same power that he refers to through, in all of these scriptures. Now, the question becomes, does the fact that blind people can't see reflected light rays mean that there's nothing in front of them? No. It's still there whether they see it or not. And that's why we get all of these scriptures that say, for those who have eyes to see, see, you know, and the blind leaders of the blind. If you, if you didn't say you were seeing, you know, in other words, if you, did, if you weren't saying you saw the light, then you wouldn't be blind. But the fact that you're saying the light and you don't see the image of that or the reality of that tells me you're lying. You're really, you really don't see it. That's what Jesus was telling the Pharisees. You claim to be able to see, but you don't see the light. I'm standing right here in front of you. That The light that Paul saw that knocked him off his horse, amen, the light that all of us came to, the light that John bore witness to, is evident that they were not spiritually seeing. They couldn't see in the spirit realm. Now, we can become... Uh, spiritually dim, you know? I mean, what Revelation does is put bifocals on us. I mean, it, it, it narrows you in to where you can see, and it, it heals the cataracts, if you will, of unbelief and doubt and disconnect, because that's all, if you, if you notice, as your eyes get, as you get older and your eyes get weaker, what you find out is it's all about light. Because I used to get up in the morning, I still do, and I would always, I've got a, a little deal that I flip every morning and it has scripture on it. And then I have a little box of promise cards that I always stick, stick it in the back and take the next one out and put it in this little apple thing. And uh, I can't see it half the time unless I take it to the window in the kitchen. We've got three windows over the counter there in the sink and stuff. And when the light, and, uh, you know, when, when the light is shining, I can read it. I don't have to put my glasses on, but if I'm over here where it's on the bookshelf, I can't read it. No matter how close I get to it, I can't read it. But as soon as I get it into bright light, I can read it. Right. The print isn't any bigger. Nothing has changed. It's just that I'm getting more light. Right. That's what revelation is. Wow. It's, things don't really change. It's just your revelation of it becomes clear. You're able to see what you weren't able to see. And that's what God's trying to get us to understand. Until we see the light, we can't be the light. Amen. Until we're aware of the light, we can't project the light. We, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. And we're spending too much time looking at the earthen vessel and not the light that God is revealing. Now, uh, let, let's, let's look at this in Luke chapter 19 and verse 42. This song, show me your glory. And I'm going to show you, I want to show you how these, this all intertwines here. Saying, if you had known, even you especially in this day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. Amen? In other words, you're not getting the light, right? Jesus is the glory of God. But he's also the light of God of God. God is light. He is the light of that God. He is the manifestation of God. Amen? All right, so look at James chapter 1, 17 through 18. And that's why Jesus was able to do the works that he did because of the light that was in him, because of the glory that was in him, because of the God that was in him made it possible. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights whom we happen to be children, yeah. makes us God lights, mm -hmm. and come down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation, no variableness, nor shadow of turning. 
of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. That we might be lights. That we might be manifestations of God. Praise the Lord. All right, John chapter 8 and verse 12. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Praise God. All right, now, let let me look at Exodus chapter 33 and verse 18. This is a song we were just singing, right? This is Moses speaking, and he said, Please show me your glory. Praise the Lord. Show me your glory. That word is uh, kabod, and uh, the the way it's used here is weightiness, or figuratively, substance. It's, It's to seem apparent. So what was he saying? I want to see a manifestation of you. Now, what did God say to Moses, who wasn't born again? You can't see my glory. You can't see the the light that shines out of me would blind you the way it did Paul. Old dispensation, you know, no grace here yet, or not grace in the way we understand it. Now, that word comes from a word 1380, which is... It means certain tense, a certain tense, or to be accounted of. So, again, it's saying something you can account for, something you can identify, right? Mm -hmm. And that comes from the root word, which is 1166, and the primary meaning there is to show. Mm -hmm. So, show me your glory. He's saying, show me your manifestation. Show me. You know, we're, we're separating that out as, a, as though glory is some thing. Yeah. Glory is someone. There it is. Show me your light is what he was saying. I need more light in order to see the manifestation that I know is real. I know it's here, but I just can't see it. Because it's, it's not an object that natural light's going to bounce off of that I can then identify it. So I need spiritual sight. I need to have my eyes opened yes. to the light of God so that I can see the manifestation of God. Now, isn't that exactly what happens when healing, yes. deliverance, yes. breakthrough in any in every area? Now, the truth is, this is why he says the kingdom is in you. All this stuff is already in you. It's in the light. It is the light. Yes. And we are that light. Yes. So not only are we healed, are we delivered? But you see, it's, that's why I'm saying it takes a revelation. It's not, we shouldn't be ashamed because we have, you know, things that contradict that. Because they're natural and this is supernatural. And you've got to start thinking from the supernatural. We've got to stop looking at the scripture through natural eyes and start seeing it through the light. Amen. As we are in the light. If you're in the light, walk in the light. Live as though you're in the light. He, he talks about being uh, operating today while the time, while the day is light, while the day is. Uh-huh. For darkness will come. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And so we, gotta, we have to learn, amen, this revelation of grace is all about this light. I mean, they're interchangeable. They're all the same thing. It's because without that revelation of grace, we'll never get to the place where, that we can see the light Amen. That is in us because we're so busy looking at the the false clay image here that is so flawed. Yeah. And it believe me, it's flawed. Yeah. It, it's a mess. But it doesn't alter or change that light that came down from the Father of lights who doesn't change. Right. Amen. And every good and perfect gift comes out of that light. Yes. And so he doesn't just give us this gift and that gift, he gives us the light. Yes. Yes. Amen? He says, you are now children of light. Yes. You are the light. Don't hide the light. Right. 
Let it shine. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen. So look at Colossians chapter 1, 25 through 27. So Moses is saying, show me your glory. Show me the light. Show me manifestation. Show me healing. Show me deliverance. Show me prosperity. Show me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, uh, here we are in the New Testament now. Of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God. Now this is Paul who saw the light before he was saved. And it was a light that blinded him. But he knew in that light was Christ. In that light was a manifestation of God because he heard the voice and that voice told him what to do from out of that light. Right. Now he's become the light. Mm -hmm. And so now he's saying what that light revealed. I became a minister according to the stewardship from God which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. The mystery which has been hidden or has been in the darkness has been right. overshadowed. For ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them, God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Praise the Lord. It's the hope of glory. Now, he's in you, but until we get the understanding of this light and what it is that's in us, it's just a hope. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Look at, uh, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses uh, 13 through 18. 2 Corinthians 3, 13 through 18. And now, remember, in this, Paul's the guy preaching grace. How did he get that message? It was a revelation. Mm -hmm. He went up to where the light was, where the light originated. God said, let there be light. That light came from somewhere. There wasn't any light there, but the light came out of him, right? So he, he went there. He got this revelation of grace because it's the thing that ties all this together. Mm -hmm. Amen? Otherwise, it seems dysfunctional. I mean, it just sounds like pie in the sky, you know, so what? But unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away, but their minds were blinded, for until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. Yes. The light, all right? Now, go, I'll show you. If you go back to uh, Exodus chapter 34, verse 33. Right. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. Why did he put a veil on his face? Because it shone. Mm -hmm. He had been in the light. Yes. And even though he couldn't bear the light the way we do, he could still reflect that light that he had been in the presence of. And it was freaking out these blind people. Right. Yep. So he puts the veil over. And now every time the Old Testament is read out of context, mm -hmm. without the context of the New Testament, right. there's no light. Right. So without grace, everybody's still in darkness. Yes. Even believers yes. are still operating in darkness, which is why we don't see the manifestations that we want. That's why we're still saying, show me your glory, when we are the glory. Come on. You understand what I'm saying? We're looking for something out here to show up, when in fact, that's the lesser. That's why in the Old Testament, you had to have those visions and those right. natural things, because they had no way of reflecting it. They only could see it externally in a, in a natural way. Come on. But we are to see this in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's how it manifests, out of our light. Mm -hmm. Am I making sense to you? Yes. Praise the Lord. So uh, now let's look at, uh, back up if you can, uh, or, or, uh, go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13. So unlike Moses who put a veil over his face so the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. What was passing away? The light, because it was temporary. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it, it, he didn't have the light. It just was, a reflect, it was reflecting off of him. Amen? But it was temporary. 
right? Now, go, drop down to verse uh, 16. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Yeah. Praise the Lord. All right. In that context, look at Isaiah 25 and verse 7. And he will destroy on this mountain the surface of the covering cast over all people yeah. and the veil that is spread over all nations. Yeah. How does he do that? Right here. Yeah. The mountains refer to masses of people, yeah. population centers. So he's going to destroy the mountain, the surface of the covering cast over all people and the veil mm -hmm. that is spread over all nations. And how's he going to do it? He's going to do it through us. That's why he tells us, let your light shine. It isn't, it isn't your little goody do's that he's saying show. He's saying show your revelation of God. Amen. And the, the natural response to that will be healings, deliverance, financial breakthrough. It'll come as a natural result because where the light is, everything that's needed is there. You understand what I'm saying? So you don't have to have a healing ministry. You just have to have the light. Because you might have one person sitting there that has a physical need in their body, and the person sitting next to them has a financial need in their bank account. And the one next to them has some relational need. You have the answer. It's in the light. In that light, everything is, is unveiled. Everything is made right in the light. Praise the Lord. All right, look, at, uh, look now at Romans chapter 8, verses uh, 18 through 24. So what I'm saying is all these things are synonymous terms. They're not, they're not individual different things. Glory, light, manifestation, they're all one and the same. Praise the Lord. You've got all the manifestation in you that you, you'll ever need. In fact, you've got all the manifestations that there can possibly be. Not just a question of what you need, but you have God in you. Amen. You have the fullness of the Godhead in you, praise the Lord. This is why we have to grow up into that full stature. Amen. We have to let our light shine. Amen. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Yeah. Not in Him, not in someplace else, not somewhere else, but in us. Praise the Lord. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Amen. Not for us to show up being really goody all of a sudden and saying praise the Lord, but the manifestation, the light, the glory. Yeah. Praise God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Remember, Christ in you, the light in you, the glory in you, the hope of Manifestation, the hope of glory, the hope of that light being revealed, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. What happened in the birth of this earth? Light. That's the first thing that happens. That's the first thing that happens when a child's born. The first thing is light. Praise the Lord. Not only that, but we also who have this first fruit of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. Praise the Lord. For we were saved in this hope. Yeah. But hope that is seen is not hope. Mm -hmm. For why does one still hope for what he sees? Right. This is the growing up. This is the, the maturation, if you will. The the revelation coming to completion in the body. Yeah. We, we're, it's the hope of glory. But once that light begins to be revealed, you don't need to hope for it anymore if you've already got it. That's what he's trying to tell us. It's already here. It's already in us. It's already what we are and who we are in the mind of God. Amen? All right, uh, Romans 5 and verse 2.
through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Amen. Grace is the key. Grace is the, the opening, amen, into this manifestation of God in us, mm. in each one of us. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because you can't get there unless you understand grace. Because you're always beaten up by your ungraceful behavior. You know, your bad behavior, your bad attitude, your bad whatever. Amen? Everything that the enemy wants to make you think is who you are. It'll make you hopeless and helpless, therefore. So, he says, into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, Amen. Christ in me. The manifestation of that light. Amen? Amen. The, the manifestation of all things of God. Every good gift that comes down from the Father of lights. Amen? All right, let's wrap up with this last scripture. John chapter 17, verses 21 through 24. That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, mm -hmm. that they may be one just as we are one. Hallelujah. I in them, you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know, so the world can get some light, yes. some manifestation, some glory, right? that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's not just talking about seeing his glory, but having his glory, because that's the context in which everything else is spoken of here. Amen. So the light in you, Praise the Lord, is Christ in you. The hope of glory or the hope of manifestation. So the light in you is the hope of the manifestation. Praise the Lord, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, it's only hope until you realize it. Then you don't need hope anymore. It's no longer hope. It's a reality. And that's where God is taking us. That's what I think this is all about. It's not something you just, you know, okay, we got it. We, we, we do have it. We do understand this. But it's a whole other thing to manifest it. That's where the hope comes in because we've got to get this understanding of grace to the place where nothing veils the light where nothing will hinder that light. The light, we got the light. We don't need to get more light. We have all the light that there is. The problem is we allow this earthen vessel to veil it because of the way we look at the, at the word of God. The way we understand the revelation that he's giving us is still to some degree veiled simply because of all the past experiences, the past teachings that are so deeply embedded in us that then when we act out in unchristian ways, it basically veils the light. It covers the light. That's why he says we are to grow up into the full stature of Jesus Christ. Amen? How do you do that? The light just shines brighter and brighter and brighter. And if you think about it in the scripture, it talks about in Psalms how that the day dawn rises. We're in the dawning of this last day. That's how this great end time revival will take place. The day is dawning. Yes. And the light, it says, grows greater yes. and greater. And even though there is gross darkness in the land, the light yes. overcomes the darkness. Mm -hmm. Everybody sees mm -hmm. the light. Why? Because the children of light that are in him, that he's in, who's in the Father, begin to shine. Amen. When That's what he's talking about here. It's not about, you know, a, a game of hopscotch or 
I'm in him, he's in me, we're in him. He's talking about this manifestation, this light. If we understand what Jesus understood, that the fullness of the Godhead dwells in me, this light's all here. And I just walk in that light. I, in other words, I, it's not me, it's the Father that's in me. Mm -hmm. That's the full stature. That's growing up so that we begin to be like Jesus, who we already are like. That's what Paul said. We already have the glory. We already have the light. We already have this Christ in us. We just haven't matured. And it's like the scripture says, you know, a child is no better than a servant. Even though he has access or has a legal right to all that the father owns, mm -hmm. he, he's not mature enough to use it. Right. So he's no better than a servant. If you think about the church, the church is still acting as servants right. rather than sons. Yes. We're immature because we're still operating under the old covenant kind of veil uh, in, in, the way that we're, uh, the, in the way that we live out our lives and, man, and try to manifest God. That's why he's telling us the veil for us the veil's been taken away. Come on. So let's quit putting it back on. Let's quit focusing on the flesh Amen. and focus on the light. Amen. And we'll be seen as children of light. Yes. And I'm telling you, when you start thinking this way, you'll start seeing God in everything. Amen. Yeah, yes. Right? I mean, your, your vision... Your spiritual vision will become perfected. perfected. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yes. So exactly what Suzanne was talking about. You see, there's so much we don't see. But it has to be happening. But just because nobody's reporting it or because we didn't see it doesn't mean it isn't a reality. So when you say, look, we're having an impact on this city, we're having an impact on this community, we're having an impact on our families, we're having an impact. You say, well, whoa. where? I mean, I don't see it. That's probably a good indication that it's happening. Because you're, you don't see it here first, you see it here first. And then the light becomes brighter and everybody else starts seeing it. Praise the Lord. And when they start seeing it, they start coming. When they start coming, then we start seeing yes. what we already saw. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. That wasn't visible. Yeah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap. And it works that way. And you see, it works that way in everything. So what is the devil's biggest job? What's his biggest tool? That's exactly right. To blind you to the reality of what and who you are. So he always has you focused on behavior attitudes. You know, he magnifies those. Why? Because that brings you down quicker than anything. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll cause the veil to come over you so quick that you don't expect manifestation. Mm -hmm. You don't feel like manifestation. You feel dark. That's why Jesus says, walk. While you're in the light, walk in the light. Yes. Because you're children of light. Yeah. Let your light shine. And we've confused that because of the little kids' songs, and they're all cute and everything else, but it's not about the, you know, helping somebody across the street, you know, or <laughs> baking cookies for the, you know, whatever. Those are good things, but I'm just saying that's not what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. The light is something that is supernaturally natural yep. for us. Mm -hmm. You see how it manifested with people in jail. The light shows up, bang. All of a sudden, their shackles are off of them. Mm -hmm. Bondages are broken, mm -hmm. right? Yep. The, they're... Uh, you know, they're in darkness. Their minds are, are, are confused and fouled up. Light comes. All of a sudden, there's understanding. There's revelation. Healing. It's all, it all works the same way. And it's not coming from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. That's the thing we've got to get understood. It's in us. Yes. It comes from us. Yes. Praise the Lord. All right. Praise God. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Let your light shine, kids. Yes. Praise the Lord. You are children of light. <laughs> your kid lights. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Your night lights. Night lights. 
Hallelujah. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Have a great rest of the week.